Chapter 3, Sad, Mad, Bad. I'll tell you how the whole week went. Terrible, terrible, terrible. It must have been National Frog Appreciation Week because frogs were all we talked about in room 26. First, Mrs. Brisbane taught everybody how to take care of Og. The students gathered around as she put on rubber gloves, picked up the insect container, and sprinkled a few into Og's tank. She didn't seem too happy about the crickets, which turned out to be quite large and ugly. The way they leaped around the tank, no wonder Og went boing. Did you see his tongue? A.J. bellowed. It must be a foot long. Ooh, he ate one, Heidi squealed. Gross, said Seth, as Og's tongue grabbed the rest of the crickets. I want to pet him, said Mandy. Before anyone could stop her, she slid the top off the tank, reached down, and picked up the big lump of frog. No, Mandy, said Mrs. Brisbane, but it was too late. He peed on me, Mandy shrieked, dropping Og back into his tank. Not that I blamed her. What unspeakably bad manners. <laughs> what unsqueakably bad manners. Is that any way for a classroom pet to act? Seth jumped back, shaking his hands. Ooh! Gail giggled, of course, as did everyone else. Wash your hands with plenty of soap and hot water, Mrs. Brisbane told Mandy. To the rest of the class, she said. That's what frogs do when they're frightened. We must all be gentle with poor Og. If you have to touch him, you must wear gloves. Pick him up by the shoulder blades and never squeeze his stomach or you'll hurt him. She ordered my classmates back to their seats, not including Mandy, who was washing her hands. Then we had to learn more about, we had to learn more frog facts. They don't start out as cute, furry little babies like hamsters. No, no, no. They start out as funny little tadpoles, then grow into ugly looking polywogs and end up as big, lumpy frogs with bulgy eyes. For some strange reason, everyone was fascinated with frogs except Tabitha and me. She paid more attention to her stuffed bear than to anything else in class. I overheard Mandy complain to the other girls that Tabitha wasn't very friendly. I tried to get her to play at recess, but she wasn't interested in anything besides that old bear. She's a big baby, Saya murmured. Maybe she's shy. I was pleased that Saya had learned to speak up, but the other girls decided Tabitha was just unfriendly like someone else who was new to room, two, room 26. After so much frog talk, Mrs. Brisbane moved on to the subject of poetry. First, we read a scary poem about a tiger. We also read a poem about a bee, followed by a silly poem about a purple cow. Some poems rhyme and some don't, but there are a lot of rhyming words like moon and june and cat and rat. Funny that, that those last two words rhyme, isn't it? At night, while Og stared into space, I made lists of rhyming words in my notebook, better than trying to talk to him as he continued to give me the silent treatment. Jumpy, bumpy, grumpy, lumpy. Funny that those words rhyme too. After a few days spent reading poems, Mrs. Brisbane said it was time for us to write our own poems. There were louder groans than the first time she mentioned poetry. Mrs. Brisbane held up her hand, which meant everybody had to be quiet. All of this is in preparation for Valentine's Day, when our class will present a poetry festival for all the parents. Each of you will recite a poem you wrote or one you like. There were no groans now. In fact, some of the students looked excited. Even Pay Attention Art Patel was paying attention. Mrs. Brisbane explained that our assignment was to write a poem about an animal at least six lines long with words that rhymed. Mandy raised her hand, and the teacher called on her. My name rhymes with candy cane, she proudly announced. Mrs. Brisbane smiled. That's right. Mandy Payne rhymes with candy cane. Does anyone else have a rhyming name? Richie rhymes with itchy, A.J. blurted out. What? asked repeated, please, Richie. Words were flying through my brain. Humphrey, Pumphrey, Dumphrey, Lumphrey. Gale rhymes with hail. Heidi forgot to raise her hand again. And fail, Kirk muttered. I heard that, Kirk Chen said Mrs. Brisbane. Well, Kirk rhymes with jerk, said Heidi, who was always ready to defend her best friend, Gail. Please no more, Mrs. Brisbane said firmly. Kirk also rhymes with work, so let's get back to work. I never saw my classmates work so hard before. Richie chewed on his pencil. Seth jiggled his leg. Heidi erased more than she wrote. 
Kirk scratched his head, and Miranda wrote and wrote and wrote. Then she stopped writing and raised her hand. Mrs. Brisbane, can you think of anything that rhymes with hamster? She asked. Let's throw that one out to the class, said the teacher. Anyone? Leave it to Golden Miranda to ask such a good question. It got everybody thinking, because it was so quiet, you could have heard a pencil drop. Two pencils did drop, in fact. How about gangster, a voice called out. Raise your hand, Heidi. Mrs. Brisbane walked to the board. How about that, class? Does hamster rhyme with gangster? She wrote the words on the board and repeated them. Hear that? They don't have quite the same sound, do they? Well, I would hope not. Gangsters are bad guys, and I am definitely a good guy. Maybe you'd better find another word to rhyme, the teacher instructed. Try Humphrey, I squeaked in encouragement. There had to be something that rhymed. Try Frog, shouted A.J. Lower your voice, A.J., Mrs. Brisbane reminded him. And raise your hand, added Heidi. Mrs. Brisbane shook her head, then began to write words on the board as my classmates shouted them out. Dog, fog, log, slog, clog, and more. Nothing rhymed with hamster, but everything rhymed with frog. How depressing. I wondered how many words rhyme with sad, like mad and bad. After recess, it was Miranda's turn to clean my cage. She always does an extra good job of cleaning my potty corner and changing my water and bedding. And she always has a special treat for me, like a piece of cauliflower. Yum. Sorry, Humphrey. I tried to write a poem about you, she told me. I think I'm going to have to write about Clem instead. Clem was Miranda's dog, the one who tried to eat me when I stayed at her house. How golden Miranda could put up with Clem was beyond me. That night, I wrote my very first poem ever. I asked Og if he wanted to hear it. His silence wasn't too encouraging, but I, I decided to read it anyway. When Ms. Mack left me for Brazil, she made me sad, sad, sad. When Clem, the dog, was mean to me, I felt real mad, mad, mad. Now Oggs moved in, and he has got me feeling bad, bad, bad. In fact, this is the worst week I've ever had, had, had. I waited to hear Og applaud, or at least give me a grudging boing. I heard only silence. When I glanced over at my neighbor, he was grinning from ear to ear, or he would have been if he had ears. Somehow, his smile didn't cheer me up at all. I felt better the following day, though, because it was Friday. That meant I would get a little break from room 26 and the green, grumpy lump. Every weekend, a different student took me home, and I had many wonderful adventures with my classmates and their families. I had even gone home with Principal Morales. This week, I was going home with wait for the Bell Garth Tugwell. He'd wanted to take me home for a long time. Can I take Og home too? asked Garth. I think Og can stay here, Mrs. Brisbane, Mrs. Brisbane answered. Frogs don't need to eat, to eat every day, except when they're young. Funny, I didn't feel quite so sad, mad, bad anymore. Can't your mom pick us up? AJ asked Garth after school. I couldn't see him, but I could hear him as we waited outside for the bus. I had a blanket over my cage because it was cold outside. I didn't mind, though, as long as I was far, far, far away from Og, who hadn't even tried to say goodbye to me. My dad said not to bother her. She's been sick, said Garth. Couldn't your mom pick us up? I wish, AJ sighed. She has to pick up my sister from kindergarten and put the baby down for a nap. Did you tell your folks about Bean, asked Garth. At least I thought he said Bean. Things sound a little muffled under the blanket. Nah, said AJ. Last time I said somebody was picking on me, my dad signed me up for boxing lessons. I hated people punching me. It was worse than being picked on. I tried to sort out what AJ meant about getting picked on. By a bean? By a boxing bean? I didn't have time to figure it out before the bus arrived. Here goes, said Garth, lifting my cage. Let's stick together, no matter what. Okay, be sure to sit in front by Miss Victoria, whispered AJ. That's the safest. By the shuffling and scuffling sounds, I could tell that we were on the bus. Luckily, a corner of the blanket slipped down, and I could see Miss Victoria, the bus driver, glancing over her shoulder. Keep moving, guys, she said in a firm voice. Whoa, ladies, one of you has to go. Can't have three in a seat. Three first-grade girls were huddled together in the seat right behind the bus driver. 
We're not moving until one of you goes. You move, Beth. The girl on the end timidly got up and started down the aisle, nervously looking back at her friends. Keep going, folks, Miss Victoria snapped. Suddenly, boom! The girl named Beth fell down, flat on the floor, right in front of us. Her book slid around the floor in all directions. The bus was quiet as Beth lay there until somebody said, Hey, klutz, you dropped something. That was followed by a nasty snicker. You tripped her, said AJ, in a voice not quite as loud as usual. Says you, AJ, what do, what do those letters stand for anyway? Awful jerk. I crawled over to the side of the cage to see who was speaking. He was big, big, big for a kid. He had spiky hair and a scowl on his face. As Garth and AJ bent over to help Beth pick up her books, Miss Victoria called to the back of the bus. Garth and AJ, if you don't sit down so I can get moving, I'm going to report you to. Yeah, Garth Bugwart. Sit down, the big kid sneered. I'm going to tell, Beth said softly. Don't, AJ whispered back. Bean will only get worse. So this was the scary bean they were talking about. Beth slid into a seat with all her books. Just as AJ stepped forward, Bean stuck his leg into the aisle. So that's how he had tripped her. After AJ managed to step over it, Garth and I, in my cage, were standing right next to Mr. Nasty. What's in the cage, bug face? Your lunch? He snorted a few times, but no one else on the bus laughed. Or is that your girlfriend? That did it. I was fighting mad. Somebody had to squeak up to this guy. For your information, I am a male golden hamster, and you are one mean bean. Anybody got a mouse trap? Bean snarled. Why aren't you guys in your seats, Miss Victoria yelled from the front of the bus. I'm writing you up, Garth and AJ. Garth slid into a seat next to AJ. I was about to give Miss Victoria peace of my mind when the bus lurched forward and I had to hold on to my cage for dear life. I was sorry I'd eaten those nutrinibbles just before we left. All week I'd been looking forward to going home with Garth. Now I wasn't sure I'd ever make it there. Friendship is one mind in two bodies. Mencius, Chinese philosopher.